my name is Said Vosuri. I'm manager AI architect at uh, Brainbox AI. I'm so happy to be here presenting uh, about utilizing AI in uh, HVAC to help fight the climate change. Uh, do you see my slides already, Adam? Yes, sir. Yes, we do. Okay, perfect. So, uh, um, you know, without you know, further delay, I jump into the topic. I just first want to take a couple of uh, sentences to introduce BrainBox AI, and then I will start about the topic that I want to cover. So uh, BrainBox AI is a, um, a, a an AI company founded in 2017, and the technology was launched in 2019, May 2019. Uh, we are headquartered here in Montreal, Canada. Uh, we have an install base in more than 15 cities worldwide, and uh, we are still, uh, you know, growing. We have tripled, tripled in size in terms of the in terms of the employees since last year, and still uh, hiring. We are in more than um, in, in more than 50 properties. We are in Canada, the United States, Australia, and uh, kind of growing worldwide. Uh, so the topic that I chose for today was about how we how we went about utilizing artificial intelligence in HVAC. You know, when Adam asked me to present to in this event, what I thought was that, okay, what can I say which can be kind of interesting for people who are either a part of the AI community working in industries or considering starting a business or, or are already in an industry and thinking about how they can employ AI in in their in their day to day business or or innovation or whatever. So uh, what I thought was that maybe a good idea is kind of going over what Brainbox is doing to deliver what it is supposed to deliver and kind of use that as a as a use case. Uh, like any other innovation problem, it it is starting with some challenges. So we are doing. AI in HVAC, HVAC being heating, ventilation, and air conditioning of the commercial buildings. Commercial buildings like schools, like uh, uh, manufacturing floors, like hospitals, you know, anything non-residential. Um, it starts from the fact that about 45% of the building energy is being used by the HVAC systems of the buildings. And about, you know, based on some estimations, about 30% of this total energy consumption is being literally wasted. Uh, this waste of energy is, first of all, money, you're paying for that, and also you're contributing to climate change, to a lot of environmental issues. And this is all because of not having a proper and energy efficient way of controlling the HVAC systems, which is also causing some sort of occupant comforts, uh, comfort issues, like uh, you, uh, we have all been in office floors where it is too cold or problems like that. Uh, so that being said, this is the challenge, and this is something that has not been really address extensively for example we see that uh, for you know taking into account this graph which shows uh, kind of different energy sectors of uh, of energy consumptions in the united states you see for uh, light duty vehicles like cars we have all different technologies like tesla zipcar car to go or for residential hvac even we have nest sunrun some power ecovi which are introducing some sort of innovative technologies uh, you know, addressing this issue, but in, in HVAC for the commercial building is really, really limited. But the next question which rises is that, okay, there is a challenge, but why AI? And I think this is a, a, a very important question that should be asked more and more often in this industry, you know, in this field. Uh, meaning that whenever you want to use AI, you have to remember when you're talking about artificial intelligence, about machine learning, about data science, you're talking about one tool in your toolbox. So a tool is useful if you know when to use it and how to use it. It's not there to do anything and it's not there to use in any way that you want to use it. So for this case, I want to walk you through why we think artificial intelligence, let's say for this industry that has never have encountered using AI, we think this can be useful. Thank you to get this graph, which kind of shows you the, you know, it, it shows an understanding of how the temperature trends would work. Um, you see the vertical axis is the temperature. We have the cooling set point and the heating set point. And the, the black line is kind of the performance of the existing HVAC systems, meaning that they are reactive. They, they wait for the temperature, let's say, to go out of the comfort range, let's say 
this cross here and then they react after that to bring it back or do whatever it's supposed to do so there is two issues here the first issue is that when you're getting here you already lost it you're already out of the comfort range yes it is not the worst thing which is happening not necessarily people are are dying in that building but uh, also, it is not comfortable. It is already a comfort issue. And at the same time, think about all the all this drift which is happening, and then you need to pay, pay energy for it to bring it back. And probably even in a lot of buildings, you might be overcooling it and then even heating in, in some hot summer days in some commercial buildings, which is a huge loss of energy. Whereas what we are thinking about is is using and what you're doing is doing some predictive control where you could say okay this is what is going to happen if you do not preempt if you do not let's say preemptively cool down and then in in that fashion you can uh, you know maintain the temperature within the zone without too much energy usage so this is to somehow give the idea of why we think predictive methodologies could work better for our industry and then we are going another extra mile to thinking about, okay, we are having the autonomous cars. We are, you know, and when you're talking about autonomous car, you're talking about a very, very high safety concerns. You're thinking about too many variables and, you know, very fast decisions, very fast dynamics of the problem. Whereas the buildings are kind of similar in the sense that you have these actuators, you are having uh, different variables, you have thermodynamic, temporally changing variables, but it is much slower, much less risk. So the question is, why not having some sort of autonomous building HVAC system? So, so here is, it, it, you know, this kind of can uh, simplify why we, we, came, we came up with the idea of using artificial intelligence for the HVAC of the building. So the, the current HVAC systems are reactive, they're schedule-based, they're rule-based, they are not adaptive at all, whereas you want something to be self-learning, you want it to continuously adapt itself to the situation, and you want to predict and based on that preemptively act. And, you know, hearing all this thing, especially talking to all the scholars that are on this call, probably you think about, okay, here is where you can think about data-driven methodologies, machine learning, artificial intelligence, and using the intelligence coming from anal analyzing the data. So this is kind of how, how we are going about why using artificial intelligence, but the next question is, okay, how? So we are, again, and I think a very important let's say, take home point for, for anyone in this industry is that we should always remember that this tool, when you are going in, into an industry and you want to perform some sort of AI-driven methodology, you should always think about the fact that you need to fit in. You are talking about an industry which is already there. You are talking about uh, people who are educated in a certain way of things being done. And now you being whoever, the innovators, the companies, anyone, you are the one who wants to change the paradigm. So it is you that needs to needs to adapt and needs to push forward. So for our case, the building is there, the control system is there, but what we are doing is introducing another layer on top, which we are kind of making intelligent, the HVAC system. Okay, so starting with the control system, like I mentioned, we are barely touching the existing uh, building HVAC control systems. It is there, the air conditioner, the baseboard, the heaters, whatever it is there. The first step that we do is introducing some sort of automation. Again, like many other fields in our field, uh, the cases are very, very, very customized, and they are so different in, in, in nature. But at the same time, we are talking about methodologies that can scale, right? So you are talking about methodologies that should learn and that you need to do transfer learning from one, one case to another, from one project to another. So things should be in some way uh, standardized. So the first layer that we introduce is the automation layer where we are having a cloud-based solution. We are extracting all the data. So th the data is there. The sensors are there in the building. The, it, this is the information which is there and it is just not being used. What we do is, is making some standard pipeline, which is extracting the data, analyzing it, structuring it in a way that it can be used by artificial intelligence. Then we, then we have our AI engine. 
as an example, we, we use deep learning methodologies uh, that we all know how, how suitable they can be when you have large amounts of data. We, you know, for our case, it is, we are always talking about the temperature trends, about the humidity trends. So it is always temporally dynamic data, time series data. And the uh, first thing that comes to my mind, Okay, recurrent neural network, for example, let's say long short term memories. So what, what you, you can do in this case is kind of using these recurrent neural networks to take advantage of the history of the data, which is kind of giving you how, how the thermal behavior of the building is. And, the net, and also using the recent trends of the data so that it can tell you where the building is headed. And where the building is headed, you're talking about the temperature, about the occupancy, you're talking about the humidity or, and whatever pertains to the, to, the H, to, to the thermodynamics of the building. And the next step is, you know, this AI is giving us predictions that you can see it as some sort of insight. So it is giving you insights. And then these insights are being use in optimization schemas. So you are, you know, for, just see this way. You are having the conventional control of the building, which is saying, okay, this is the temperature. This is the set point. Compare when the set temperature is out of the set points, then do something. Whereas here, let's say your AI engine is telling you two hours in advance what's going to happen in the future. And now you can plan for the optimal way with, with the minimal uh, loss of energy to maintain the occupant comfort that you want to maintain. So then this goes into a 24 hours a day, seven days a week, all weeks of the year of constant learning, predicting, comparing, and acting, which kind of... Uh, 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 you know, results in the autonomous buildings that we talked about in the beginning of the presentation. To give you an example of how the how well the prediction could look like, this is, for example, uh, a, a a real a real re retail store here in Montreal, and this is some analysis, some two hours prediction on the temperature at the vertical axis that we have done. You can see how well the, the prediction, the two hours prediction, and I, I also want you to pay attention to the scaling of the temperature. And also remember that these temperature sensors usually have plus minus half a degrees of, of error themselves. But you see how well the predictions could be done. And then using those predictions, you can in advance do any sort of preemptive control which is required. And you know, using all these things, uh, you can create value. And so, so this is kind of, you know, for example, for our case, it is up to 25% of energy saving. Energy saving means, um, you know, decrease in carbon for footprints coming from uh, from the, you know, uh, the, the production of the energy and the energy cycle. And also we are seeing 60, about 60% 60 of improvement in occupant comfort with a, an autonomous technology, which is getting installed in two to three hours. So generally speaking, here we are talking about how to, how to know an industry. You should always start with the challenge. Then you need to talk about why this challenge requires this sort of treatment, let's say data-driven methodologies or machine learning or whatever innovative technology that you want to use. And then it's about how to let it fit in the industry that you are, uh, that you are kind of addressing. Uh, I think I'm almost on top of my time, so I'll, I'll stop here. Thank you so much for your time and attention. Uh, I, I really urge you to uh, visit our website. We have our white paper, so if you want more details that could not kind of that maybe um, uh, fit into the scope of this presentation, you can use that. And any questions offline or online, I'd be glad to take them.